Hey, what up squad? It's your boy KFlow. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I undercoated my truck. Now let's get this thing started. Woo -hoo -hoo. So for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is KFlow and this channel makes the most in-depth Tacoma DIY tutorials. So make sure you smash that like and subscribe button because that does really help the channel out. Do it now, guys. So I do live in New Jersey, guys, and the road salts here are terrible. It'll definitely rot out your truck if you don't take extra precaution. So typically what I do before the winter is I do like to treat my frame so that it's protected all winter long. And I've tried many products, including Core 15 and Fluid Film, and they do work but not as well as I hoped. Pore 15 requires rigorous preparation before you apply the stuff onto the metal. While fluid film, it does work really well, but my only issue with it is that it doesn't cure and it stays wet on the surface. So it attracts all this dirt, this debris, and the sand right onto the frame and just clumps up. And I really don't like that. Now, after hours of research, guys, I did find two products that I really liked that both doesn't require too much preparation and it actually dries to the touch. These products are called the Eastwood Internal Frame Coating and the Cosmoline RP342. So with that being said, I'll be showing you how I prepped up the truck and applied these products. And these products you can find on my Amazon page. Check that out at amazon.kflow-crib.com. Now let's get to the truck. Ashback. So I started this frame protection effort actually several months ago after I welded the sliders onto my truck. I used this Eastwood internal frame coating to pretty much coat the inside section of all the box portion of the frame. What's great about this product is it does come with a hose and at the tip of it, it has a 360 degrees nozzle. So it allows the whole internal portion of the frame to be coated completely. And what I like about this is that it actually dries completely after it's cured. I use the green tinted paint so I know which surfaces on the interior there has been coated or not. Because I can also stick in a bore scope and scope out the inside of that frame. Now let's fast forward to a few weeks ago, right before our first snowfall. One semester later. So let's put the truck on jack stands, guys. So I did put total eight jack stands, guys, as a total precaution. Because I am planning on taking off all four wheels and tires. And the two right there on the front are pretty much holding all of the front. And these are floating just an inch below the frame. So just in case. Now let's take off that front skid plate with a 12 millimeter socket. Now let's remove that spare tire. So just a quick hack on the spare tire removal there. Since my tailgate was down and my camper was on there, it was definitely gonna be a lot of work to remove the camper just to get access to the spare tire. So what I did was I took the spare tire hook to remove the, the spare tire. I took the set screw off so that I can fit it, this whole thing, on a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench. So you can see it fits there perfectly. Now I just use this wrench and ratchet it away from underneath. And here's what I'm talking about guys, the tailgate is down. And obviously you can't pick it up with the camper in the way. Alright guys, let's do a quick inspection of the wheel wells and underneath in the frame. So as you can see, everything is still covered with a small layer of dirt from all the mudding trips that we did. There's definitely still leaves and garbage in there. Looks like we lost a couple of the plastic tabs that hold this thing. Uh, same thing here, guys. There's definitely a lot of dirt
and here's the spare tire area guys in the midsection of the truck so you can see there's a lot of leaves and debris so let's clean all that stuff off of the axle so now let's take off those mud guards too so we can give the wheel wells a thorough cleaning now we can use a foam cannon to spray down all that corded area So now let's use a pressure washer to remove all the suds and all the dirt stuck on that frame. So to help dry the stuff guys much quicker, I'm going to be using my leaf blower. The next morning. So for coating the frame guys, we're going to be using this RP342. This is basically a a quick drying cosmoline and it's supposed to be tinted in black so that it actually makes the frame look much cleaner but right now I have it in hot water bath in this pot and this is just hot water directly from the tap because obviously you don't want this boiling since you're gonna get these cans over pressurized and might explode on you so hot water from the tap should be enough so I'll start out with spraying down the inside of those wheel wells with a really thick first layer. So that's what the first layer looks like guys. It is a little bit runny so just keep that in mind when you do this. So I did use a rag to clean up any of the overspray that went down to those yellow shock absorbers. I mean, when you spray the stuff, it looks like it kind of splatters a little bit. And as long as you're wiping them down quickly, it shouldn't really stick on anything that you don't want um, coated with the, with the black wax coating. So now let's do the same thing at the opposite side. Now I'm under the bed, guys and I'm just gonna hit all these areas under here and make my way towards the front. Making my way through the middle of the frame, guys. Now let's hit this front lower section of the truck, guys. Now let's also hit this front skid plate. I'll also use this as a bit of a test, so it hasn't really snowed yet here in Jersey. And as you can see, this thing has a little bit of rust on the surface there. Some is deeper than others. But I'm gonna coat it with this, um, with this product and we'll see how well it holds up in the spring. I just finished spraying using the three cans, guys. And I would suggest definitely using a full face shield. Look at that, that stuff really gets everywhere. And I was using uh, my eye protection and a uh, respirator. But geez, yeah, definitely use a full face shield, guys. Two hours later. So it's been a few hours already, guys. Let's see how everything cured. Man, that looks really good, guys. I definitely prefer this product over all the other stuff that I've used in the past. And I'll talk about that more towards the end of this video. And as you can see, it's pretty much dry to the touch. I mean, a little bit of tackiness at some areas, but at least it's not gonna attract dirt and dust and it will still repel water. So that's pretty nice, guys. And here's the rest of that front wheel well area. Now I did get a little bit on the struts there and according to the instructions, this stuff should just come off with a little bit of denatured alcohol. So trying that now. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Like the overspray is pretty easy to, to take off. And here's what the rear wheel well looks like, guys. I did also spray the leaf springs down with this stuff. Because they do have a tendency of pretty much rusting but that looks good guys let's also do a tackiness test with this one I mean it's definitely not coming off a little bit tacky 
but I'm sure after it's sat there it'll, it'll dry pretty well. So far I'm pretty happy with at least the application. I'll keep you guys posted with how this thing holds up through the rough winter. And here's what the skid plate looks like guys. Let's take a look at the other side. Yeah, that looks like a really nice waxy coating. Here's what the front frame looks like guys. I did use POR15 on this before, but preparation really makes it a bitch. So you can see, this is POR15 like peeling off. So the only thing left at this point guys would be to reinstall the wheels and tires, the front skid plate, and that rear spare tire. And here's a little bit more background on the truck guys. It's a 2009 Tacoma TRD Sport and I was able to get frame coating from the dealer as well as free rear leaf spring replacement. And I was able to do this by going to toyota.com slash recall and I put in my plate number or in your case you can also put in your VIN number and get the recall checked on your truck. I contacted them shortly and then made an appointment. So they inspected my truck and unfortunately it did not meet the requirements for frame replacement. According to their guidelines it's supposed to have a 10 millimeter hole or larger before it needs replacing and I guess fortunately and unfortunately for my end there was only surface rust and I was already taking care of the frame before that point too so I mean I guess it is what it is. At least they were able to coat the frame of the truck and that was nice guys. And this actually dovetails to a question from one of you guys. BS asks, Hey Kflow, how did you get your frame coated? Was it during the recall period or after it expired? It was coated during the recall period. And I mentioned what I mentioned earlier about going to toyota.com slash recall and checking the VIN. Then he followed up with a question as to how the coating's holding up and if I have any suggestions. I mean, it's okay. Those, the coating that they apply is almost like a fluid film, like a thicker fluid film, but it doesn't cure either. So every time I do drive to the beach, it just attracts so much sand and so much dirt. And I, I really don't like that at all. Because if you think about it, all this stuff is sticking to your frame, like leaves, twigs, dirt. They're also going to attract moisture. So now you have this clump of wet dirt and debris sticking to the frame of your truck. So now I'm going to talk about more of the products that I've used and my experiences with them. And I'm not gonna go into too much technical details because channels like Project Farm does an awesome job when it comes to the technical comparisons as well as the performance under his test parameters. So if you haven't checked out his channel, make sure you check that out. It's Project Farm, he does some really good stuff. The first product is this stuff called Ospo. Ospo is basically an acid that you apply to rusty surfaces. And what it does is it converts that iron oxide, which is rust, into an iron phosphate, which is like a black coating on top of that metal. This stuff does work pretty well for converting the rusty surfaces into a more paintable primed surface. The only issue with it is it still requires that surface to be further coated with paint or something else like POR15 to pretty much seal that base metal layer from the environment. So it's multi-steps before you can get a fully protected metal piece. So POR15 is the other product that I've used and it does work. My only issue is it does also require like rigorous preparation. You'll have to make sure you brush off as much of the scaling as possible. You don't necessarily have to convert the rust underneath, but it is preferred that you use a rust converter prior. And then on top of that, you also have to make sure that the surface is clear and clean. So I would typically use something like an acetone or an alcohol to wipe down those surfaces before applying the POR15. And if it's not applied properly, 
once it starts peeling, it will actually start peeling off in sheets. So now you have a larger area that you'll actually have to retreat again. So pore 15 does degrade if it's exposed to direct sunlight for long periods of time. So areas like the hitch portion of the truck, you also will need to add another layer of paint to protect the pore 15 underneath it. So that's more and more steps in preparation to make sure that that paint is fully adhering to the metal as well as it's fully protected from the sun. So fluid film is another really popular product that does work really well. You don't need too much in terms of preparation. I mean, you can probably do a quick wash down of the frame of the truck and make sure it's dried after, after a day or two and then you just spray away. But my biggest gripe is that it just attracts so much dirt. And especially since I do drive a lot on the sand um, because I have a beach pass here in Jersey all that sand just sticks to the frame and, and I don't like how it looks and it also goes the same when it comes to doing a lot of fire trails or going through mud. This Eastwood internal frame coating is actually a really good product in terms of minimal preparation. There's really not much you can do with the internal portion of a box frame. So just make sure it's dry and it's been sitting out for a couple days then just spray away and coat that interior portion. So as you can see, this RP342 really didn't require too much in terms of preparation and it actually dries to the touch. And what's nice about this coating is that it's wax based too, so it repels water. And if you watched my folding Tacoma's video, as long as you could repel water, you can definitely prevent a lot of the corrosion. And here's a few final thoughts guys. I definitely would recommend buying more than three cans of this stuff because I just had enough to coat the frame. But you'll also want to coat your control arms, your leaf springs, and other components like the drive shaft. So just to point out guys, the CRC corrosion inhibitor ranked number one in Project Farms testing for its durability. So that's why I went with the Cosmoline RP342, which is basically like a derivative of the CRC corrosion inhibitor because that's also a cosmoline derivative. I have high hopes for this product guys and I'll keep you posted with how it holds up through all the salt spray and overlanding trips that I do throughout this winter. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you with making a decision for undercoating your truck. So that's pretty much it. I'll catch you guys next time. Happy holidays and peace out.